If you have a noise coming from your vehicle that sounds like this, quickly pull over and do a front end check. Take hold of the wheel and give it a quick spin. I hear a little bit of a humming noise, we'll give it a wiggle. This vehicle has serious issues. My name's Len from 1A Auto, let's check this out together. Now this vehicle had to be towed into the shop because it's technically undrivable, at least safely. Of course, the first thing we wanted to know was some of the symptoms that led us here. They had a little bit of a humming noise coming from the wheel bearing area. After a while, that noise progressively got worse and they started feeling a brake pulsation and a shake. The tires even started wearing oddly. Next thing you know, there's a loud clacking noise coming from the left front here and they can't drive at all. Safely raise and support the vehicle, we'll take the wheel and give it a quick spin. I'm listening for a humming noise coming from the bearing. I hear a little bit, but it's not horrible. We'll take hold of that wheel. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's definitely an issue here. I can see movement in this area, but I definitely want to check that tie rod as well. So I'll just give this a quick shake. I get no movement from that. All right, let's get the wheel off and have a closer look. All right, now that we have the wheel off, let's have a close look here. It looks like somebody just did pads and rotors and a brand new caliper. I'm sure they probably did it on both sides. Oh, look at that. I'm looking at the axle nut here. As far as the axle stud itself, it does have a small slot up along the top here. The nut should be peened down into that area. It's not. Oh, there's the peen, almost 180 degrees off. That's odd. Why would anybody loosen up the nut if they're just doing a brake job? It's important to install your axle nut and torque it to the manufacturer settings. If you either under torque it or over torque it, you can cause some serious damage. That's good enough. By under torquing this and not peening it in, there's a possibility that the axle will be able to move around a little bit. Worse than that, the axle nut might even back off while you're driving down the road. Another thing you don't wanna do is put on your axle nut and use some sort of air impact device. By over torquing the axle nut like I just did right here, I'm going to cause excessive pressure on the wheel bearing itself. By having pressure internally on that wheel bearing, it's going to actually cause excessive friction, create heat, and melt out the grease that's on the inside of the bearing. In which case, you're not going to have proper lubricity and you're going to have a wheel bearing failure. Huh, I got a brand new steering knuckle back here. Ooh, looking down here, look at that. This axle's completely separated. That's really bad. Now on most passenger vehicles, what you're going to find is you have a sealed wheel bearing. Back in the old days, they had adjustable wheel bearings. You would go ahead and take everything apart, clean those bearings, give them a close inspection, repack them with a whole bunch of grease and put everything back together. Make adjustments as necessary so you don't have any bearing movement. Passenger vehicles nowadays will have a sealed bearing, whether it's a Preston bearing or even a bolt-on. This one in particular in the front has a bolt-on wheel bearing. Now generally for those, you would have to remove the axle nut, break the axle free, and then remove the bolts that are holding the wheel bearing to the knuckle. Once you do that, the wheel bearing will pop right off, right? Probably not. Now at this point, you're probably trying to figure out how to get this off of here. Take your trusty hammer and give it a couple loving bonks, right? Well, when you do that, you can cause some serious internal damage to the bearing. You might not feel it now, but after driving down the road, that movement is gonna continuously get worse and worse. You're gonna start hearing a noise and eventually you'll be able to shake your wheel around like what we had here. If that wheel bearing was to get bad enough, it could potentially cause a serious issue with the axle as you can see. Why would that be? Well, the axle is connected to your transmission and it goes all the way over to the backside of the wheel bearing, which is located at the steering knuckle. That axle is gonna be spinning very fast as you're driving down the road. That's what it's meant to do. Of course, the joint should be able to pivot just a tiny bit as you're hitting bumps going up and down while spinning. But if the wheel bearing can do this while you're driving down the road, the axle shaft is gonna be doing this and it's gonna cause a lot of wear. If it's doing that and you're making a sharp turn, that joint is gonna be at a sharp angle and it's gonna be causing even more wear and potentially even break apart like this one did here. Once you know what's wrong with your vehicle, the next thing you need to do is go to oneauto.com. We'll ship those parts out to you fast and free. At this point, I'm gonna continue on to tearing everything out of the vehicle so we can have a closer look on the bench. Mm -hmm. 
Over on the bench, we can have a closer look at the original axle, the brand new axle, and a completely different axle that's already torn apart so we can have a look at the inside. We'll pause on these two for now and start with the original axle. As you can tell, the boot's completely torn open. The boot is supposed to protect the internals. If any miscellaneous debris made its way on the inside, it could cause some sort of binding, cause a noise of some sort, and potentially cause what we have here. Now, typically, as I said, there should be a boot protecting all that. While you're driving down the road, the axle will be spinning very fast. At the same time as it's spinning, it should be able to pivot up and down a little bit with the suspension and be able to turn while you're making corners. This is all well rotating, so there needs to be lubricant on the inside to lubricate the ball bearings. This is another axle. It's a little bit different, but it's already taken apart so you can see exactly what's going on on the inside. We have the caged area that's supposed to be holding each one of those ball bearings in place. This should be able to rotate and keep constant velocity while you're driving. Now that we have the bearing out of the vehicle, we can have a closer look at it. As I turn this, what I want you to pay attention to is in between this area and the hub of the bearing, pretty much right inside this crack. I'll give this a light wiggle. I can see a whole bunch of movement coming from that area. That's not good. And I gotta tell you, I can't apply nearly as much pressure as having the weight of the vehicle on the ground would cause on this bearing. The next thing we'll do is just give this a quick spin. As you can tell, this spins with no resistance. That means the grease on the inside has worked its way out and the bearings failed. You can even hear some noise. Let's have a close look at the brand new bearing. The first thing you'll notice is it looks as though it's the exact same thing. We'll give this a wiggle. There's zero movement coming from this inside of this area. Try to give it a little spin. As you can tell, there is some resistance in this area. Now this doesn't necessarily feel like it's binding in any way, but it definitely does have a little bit more resistance. It's kind of harder to spin. There's also grease, which is lubricating the area. This bearing feels a lot better. I don't hear any noise coming from it. Let's install this in the vehicle. Now that we have everything back together, let's go ahead and give this a quick check. I'm gonna shake it side to side, no movement. Up and down, once again, no movement. Let's give it a spin. Perfect. Now at this point, with the vehicle back together, we're going to take this for a road test down to our local alignment shop. I hope you liked the video, I hope you found it interesting. If there was something in this video that you think might help somebody, go ahead and share it with them. If you like the video or even love the video, go ahead and smash on that like button for me. It'll mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.